We know how the old saying goes. Why bring an axe when you have a Chris Reeve folder? Oh, oh, you haven't heard that? Hmm, must be a regional thing. Specifically the Umnumzon, a $425 folder on loan from Fancy Knife Channel, Tovarish Works, who has uh, apparently recorded a third intro, so let's see what he has to say today. Basically, when he loaned this to me, he was like, Hey man, just treat it like a Chris Reeve. You know, like it was your own. Hmm, okay. Let's look at the dimensions, like the overall length and weight. The blade length and the cutting edge. The handle size. The grip area. the spine thickness and handle thickness and the height sorry the tallness closed so you've seen my Sabenza 21 review I did a while back and maybe you enjoyed me beating the piss out of that one you might also remember I was a little eh, about that knife to use a technical term so what do I think about the similarly sized Umnumzon well Let's look at the blade closer first. The knife can be ordered in a drop point or a tanto currently. Tavares bought the tanto, so I don't know, good for him. The tanto shaped blade features a hollow grind and a stone washed finish made from S35VN. Yay, not cheap. The blade is deployed by thumb studs, which act as blade stops when the blade is open and closed. Hence the rubber O-rings on the studs and to make it a little easier on your tender thumbs. It's an easier deploy than the 21. With a medium amount of force, you can get it to deploy nicely and smoothly. The blade spine near the tang has some nice, tightly spaced jimping that's neither edgy or useless. It provides friction without creating much of a hot spot. There's large phosphor bronze washers on either side of the pivot, and the knife comes with fluorite grease to keep it lubed. It also has a glass breaker on the tang, and it looks like a bump when closed, like right here. So, I'm sure that's patented somehow. The open back handle is made from two slabs of titanium held together at the pivot with a standoff and a lanyard pin. The bead blasted titanium and grooves provide a decent amount of traction that feels smooth but not slick. The interior of the handle and the sides are not milled, which is why it weighs about 5 ounces. Now that said, it does feel to be a more solid knife than its weight would suggest. Knife dudes love talking about famous Chris Reeve tolerances, and this one is no exception. There's over $400 worth of them, in fact. So that means blade centering is good, and it opens and closes like it should. The frame lock covers nearly all the tanks, so it's nice and sturdy, more so than most other frame locks on knives I own. Blade retention when closed is just okay. It has a nice detent but it isn't strong enough to keep you from flinging it open if you throw it downward like this. It shouldn't open in your pocket, though. Shouldn't. The clip. The clip is titanium and fixed into place. Blade backward, tip up in my right pocket is where you might find it. The clip is mounted into a recessed area of the handle, and the clip is nice and springy, not too tight, not too loose. Goes in the pocket really nice. It's not a super deep carry clip either. A little over half an inch is protruding, not including the lanyard paracord knife sculpture Bud K bead art thing back on the rear of the knife. The knife can be ordered in a left or right handed version, so if right is not your thing, then you can get the left one. Now let's compare it to some other popular everyday carry knives that are less expensive. First is the Japanese made $60 Endura 4, which was my everyday carry for years before I got more expensive knives that deployed faster and I felt guilty for carrying a $60 knife. There's nothing really wrong with it. While a $425 knife has diminishing returns in performance, but not necessarily in knife snobbery, a good $60 knife is a very sound choice for a person looking for something called a knife that cuts things. And then there's my paramilitary too. It's a very fast deploying knife with excellent ergonomics, but maybe less of those tolerances. Oh, look, okay, there, there's some tolerances. 
The handle on the paramilitary too, and the Endura, is more comfortable than the Umnumzan. Because the Umnumzan has some protrusions for the blade stops that kind of stick out awkwardly from the bottom of the handle, so technically both Spydercos feel better in the hand. Better ergonomics must lower MSRPs, I guess. Then there's my 941, a very great light everyday carry knife. Similar blade length, easier and faster to deploy than the Chris Reeve, although the handle is a little slicker because of the carbon fiber. Sorry, I don't have my Sabenza 21 to compare it to, but that knife is overall a bit more boring, but has a more comfortable handle, and it's lighter. Um, Tovarish Works has it right now. So let's beat it and talk about my feelings. Let's see if that triggers a demonetization, like my Izulu review for whatever reason. Let's start with some foreplay known as cardboard cutting. Remember though, folks, cut toward the scrotum and in quick jerks. Okay, okay, let's do some spine wax as to address things people have said I didn't do recently in the reviews. Yeah, look at that, holds up well, no issue there. Whack, 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 whack. Fap, 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 fap. I did notice that on my Sabenza, which I did beat on more than this, that the titanium frame lock did have a slight indentation where the tang and the lock met after beating on it for some time. I wouldn't call it overly soft titanium, but I found whacking too hard isn't good for long-term health. All right, now let's work the tip in. The Umnumzan has a pretty thick tip, so that means you can pry anything with it. Rocks, car hoods. Okay, maybe don't go overboard and just stick to the tasteful stuff seen in this video. Sometimes I wonder if I should start putting disclaimers in case some people take me too seriously. Okay, what about some chopping? You know, things knives are designed for. You know, speaking of that, a single Chris Reeve Instagram use pocket knife. You could actually buy a Grands for Brook. Brook. I'm sure I'm going to be um, hit over the pronunciation for that one. And a good gas powered chainsaw like a Husqvarna. You could actually get both of those for the price of this knife. Maybe I'm not the right guy for reviewing high end production folders. I really cease to see how much more value you can get out of a knife that's over $200. This one included. While it's true I do like this one a bit more than the large Sabenza, it isn't that exciting either. It's a pocket knife with materials and build quality you can find in a knife for less than $200 or slightly over $200. Take for example the Zero Tolerance 0450. You'll just have to imagine it here because I don't own one. Titanium, S35VN blade, made in the USA. But I guess minus the $225 in tolerances or extra QC. But anyway, build quality is good. Not that it's a fun fidget knife, and the handle could be more comfortable. And of course you can find similarly produced knives for much less money. Not talking about mid techs or customs, I get why those cost big amounts of money. So I've watched a few factory tours, and I guess I'm not convinced why a USA made Spyderco costs a fraction of a Reeve when they look similarly made. But hey, people spend $400 on pairs of shoes made out of foam glued together by robots. If you like this review, please subscribe to Tovarish Works. And a big thanks to him for loaning me these knives to make jokes about, not fully appreciate, and beat on a bit. He's a good dude. So subscribe to him. Seriously, like the video. Leave a comment and explain what I'm just not getting about Chris Reeve knives.